Hallelujah. Praise the Lord and welcome to Victoria's Faith Ministry Believers Conference 2021. The Lord is good and His mercies endure it forever. And I'm grateful to be here to minister to you this evening. We thank God for all that the speakers that has passed before. Uh, we thank God for the awesome sessions by Pastor EJ and Pastor Coffee this morning. Even we thank God this evening for the session from Pastor Peter Regis. And I'm here to add more to the pie. I trust that you will uh, allow yourself to be ministered to. You would open up your heart. You would let the word of God minister to you. And we are really, really grateful for all that the Lord has done. And before my focus people get upset with me, all you focus people on the platform, good afternoon. Thanks for logging in. But I'm not the only speaker, so you can log in otherwise, all right? Amen. Need to do some pastoral work. <laughs> Amen. But we thank God for what he has done and what he is going to do. So let's pray, let's get into the word, and let's study the word of God and believe God to meet our needs through his word tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to minister your word. And as I stand to teach, I yield my spirit, soul, and body to your Holy Spirit. I ask for your spirit to flow through me and teach. Make the word of God come alive to your people. I pray for those on the platform that you will give on to them the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the insight of your word. The eyes of their understanding will be open to comprehend truth. And as I teach your word today, I thank you your word will fall on good grounds and it will bring forth fruit, not 30 fold, not 60 fold, but 100 fold, to your honor and to your glory. Now, Lord, Solomon said, the sweetness of the lips increase learning. Make my lips sweet tonight so that learning can increase in Jesus' mighty name. And all who agree with that say, Amen. Now, I encourage you to get your Bible, to get your notepad. And as we study the Word of God together, let's believe God for revelation. Let's believe God for understanding as God open our mind and, and help us. Now, I want to teach on a subject called Believing and Trusting are they the same? Believing and trusting, are they the same? And our foundation text is taken from Mark chapter 9, verse 23, and Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. In Mark 9, 23, Jesus said, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. So we understand from this verse that the word, the phrase we want to pull out is the phrase believe. So he said, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. In Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5, the Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. The word I want to pull is the word trust. So in Mark 9, 23, we deal with the word believe, but in Proverbs 3, 5, we deal with the word trust. Now, many of us, this, many of you, this is how you think. You think that once you're believing, you're trusting, and once you're trusting, you're believing, and that was my concept for years, that if I am believing God, it means that I'm trusting God, and if I'm trusting God, it means that I'm believing God. I never separate them. I always had it together as one. Then one day, some years ago, a couple of years ago, the Lord said this to me. He said, believing and trusting are not the same. And that was an eye-opener to me. I said, believing and trusting is not the same. He said, no, 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 they're not the same. There is a difference between believing and a difference between trusting. And then he began to explain to me, and, and let, me, let me give it to you, and you, you can write it down. He said, believing is your connector to me. Trust is what you do after you have connected with me. Let me repeat that. He said, believing is how you connect with me. Trust is what you do after you have connected with me. So I began to realize that there is a difference between the two. And then he shared some stuff with me in reference to trust, which is what I want to work on. Because with just uh, 40, 35 to 40 minutes to share, um, I had two points with some sub points. So 
I want to focus on the second point, but I'll give you the two points and then we will focus on the second point and the sub points that go with it. So, first of all, point one, we would be looking at understanding the concepts of believing. Understanding the concepts of believing. And then the second point we will be looking at is understanding the concepts of trusting because they are not the same. If believing is your connector and trust is what you do after you connect, it means that they both have different concepts and different components. So we need to understand the different concepts. We need to understand the different components and we need to work with it. Okay. So um, for the sake of time, let me just quickly touch some things relative to believing and then we will focus more on um, the second point, which is understanding the concept of trusting, okay? Now, we're going to use a lot of scripture, so work with me here. God works with his word. His word is what renews our mind. We're in church, amen? All right, now, so let me just deal with one of the concepts of, of believing, and it's found in Mark 9, verse 29, and this is what I want you to write down. Believing is not an automatic behavior. Believing is not an automatic behavior. I wish it was, but it is not. This is why in your Christian walk, you find that it's easy for you to believe God for in one area, but you struggle to believe God in another area. And the reason for that is because it's not automatic. Not because you could believe for money, it means you could believe for healing. Not because you could believe for healing, it means you could believe for money. Not because you could believe for money, it means you could believe for protection. Not because you could believe for protection, it means you, you have faith for your children. No, 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 no. It's not automatic. And when you look at Mark chapter 9 and verse 23, Jesus said, if thou canst, all things are possible to him that believe it. Now, Jesus did not say all things are possible. See, most time when we read that verse, we think Jesus is telling us all things are possible. He didn't say that. He said, if you can, all things are possible to them who can. As a matter of fact, I, have, I don't know if you all have this translation. It's called the Young Literal Translation. And in the Young's Literal Translation, this is how it's translated. It says, Jesus said to him, if thou art able to believe, all things are possible to the one that is able to believe. So what it means is that when it comes to believing, it's not automatic. It is possible that there are certain things when it hit me, I may struggle to believe. And there are certain things when it hit me, I can believe. So believing have different concepts. And it's important that you know it because it is your connector. What do I mean by it is your connector? Well, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So I'm told from God's word that believing connects me to God, and the way it connects me to God is that I must believe that he is. Then number two, I must believe also that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So my believing connects me to God. But not because I, my believing connects me to God, it means that my trust walk is going to be faultless. I can be connected to God through my believing and struggle to walk where my trust is concerned. Okay, I want you to get that because believing and trust is not the same. And you need to understand that. Now, let me give you an illustration. Some years ago, I was ministering to a young lady who was dying with cancer. And I, we had a healing service. I laid hands on her. The healing anointing went into her. It was extremely strong. It went into her. And I like to put it this way. I shook under the anointing. She shook under the anointing. It was that strong. She left to go home. And in about a month time, she went home to be with the Lord. The Wednesday before she went home to be with the Lord, the Spirit of God spoke to me, and he called her name, and he said, she did not connect with me. She did not connect with me, which means she died. Now, I don't have time to explain all of this. She died with the healing power of God in her body. I don't have time to explain that, all right? We only have some few minutes. That's a different lesson. Okay, so she died with the anointing on the inside. She went home to be with the Lord. And 
I understood what he meant. She did not connect with her believing. And sometimes that's what happened with us. We think believing is trusting and trusting is believing. And we put ourselves in places where we are trying to trust, but we have never connected. Platform quiet. Let me say that again. We put ourselves in places where we are trying to trust, but we have never connected with our belief. Now, I'm going to follow what came up in my spirit. In my notes, at the end of it, I was going to give you a definition of what it means to believe and to trust. Okay, what it means to believe and to trust, but I'm going to give it to you now. Okay, here, here's, here, we, here is how believing and trusting work together. When they are working together, it goes like this. When believing and trusting are working together, it looks like this. I have received through believing. I am now trusting to experience. Let me say that again. I have believed or I have received through believing. I am now trusting to experience. Amen. I'm, let me say it again a third time. I have be received through my believing, I am now trusting to experience. Let me say it again. I have received through my believing, I am now trusting to experience. I'm going to say it a fourth time. I have believed, I have received through my believing, I am now trusting to experience. Now, because of that, you will now understand why I want to deal primarily with understanding the concepts of trusting. So I'm going to spend the next 30 minutes talking about understanding the concepts of trusting and I pray you work with me as we go through that and may the Lord help as we go along. <clears throat> now um, this is a series I've done. I've done the believing concept before. It could check out the ministry website and you could get the information. Just type in focus on God's word ministry and go into media and search. All right. <laughs> but let's start to talk about understanding the concept of trust. So we're going back to Proverbs chapter 3. And let's look at verse 5. And in Proverbs 3 verse 5 it says, Trust in the Lord with how? With all my heart. And lean not unto my own understanding. Now let's get some, com some, some comprehension about trust. You could write this down. Let me give you a definition of trust. Trust is my firm belief. In the ability or strength of someone or something. I repeat that. Trust. It's my firm belief in the ability or strength of someone or something. So I'm told to trust in the Lord with all my heart. It also means this. That because of my human capacity, I am developed to think independently instead of God dependent. You know, basically how we are as humans, because of the way we are as humans, we are developed to think more independent than dependent. So when God says to trust, he's trying to switch, change your way of thinking. He's trying to get you to begin to think God dependent and less independent. But you know, that, that is a part of the whole concept about trusting. Now. Let's look at some components when it comes to trusting, okay? All right, now write this down. Trusting is the time we spent. It's the time we spend between believing I have received and I shall have it. Put up on, on the screen for me Mark chapter 11 and verse 24. I'll quote it. It says, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. The way you connect is to believe that you receive them. Now, this verse didn't say when you pray, believe. This verse says when you pray, believe that you receive them. There's a difference between when you pray, you believe, and when you pray, you believe you receive them. They're two completely different things. So he says when you pray, believe that you receive them. Then he says, and you shall have them. Now, the thing about the you shall have them is that the Lord doesn't tell you when. I wish he did. <laughs> I really wish he did. <laughs> but he doesn't tell you when. All he tells you is that believe you receive them and you shall have them. So what do I do between the time I believe I receive them and the time I have them? I have to trust. So I connected with God through my belief. I believe I receive, so now I am trusting to experience what I believe I have 
receive. So you have to do that. So trusting is the time we spend between believing I have and you shall have. Now, a next component about trust is this. Trust is a process. Come on, type that in, on, 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 in the chat. Trust is a process. It's not automatic. It's a process. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 35. Trust is a process. Now, in Hebrews 10 and verse 35, the Bible says, Cast not away therefore your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. And next way we could put that is this way. Cast not away therefore your trust, because it has great recompense of reward. Now, why will he tell me not to cast away my trust? Because trust is a process. And because it's a process, I could cast away my trust. See, this is what the Lord told me when he said, believing and trusting is not the same. We're talking about trusting. He said to me, the trusting process many times is as a maze experience. Not a maze experience, but a maze. M-A-Z-E, a -A maze experience. Have you ever full out get, gotten something and there's a maze and the man has to come from this point and get to that point? He said to me, trusting is a maze experience. So I have two persons here. I want to use them as illustrations. So come and help, help, help me. They put a little bit of sweetness in the sermon. Okay. So one stand on this end and one stand on this end. Okay. And let me give you the illustration right here. Good. And the other person come and stand here. Good. And let me give you the illustration how the Lord showed me. He said to me, most times when we are trusting him and we are working with Mark eleven twenty four. you know the Bible says what things ever you desire when you pray, believe, you receive, and you shall have. We are here where we believe and receive. He said, and this is where we need to go, where we shall have. And we think this is how it works. One straight line. And you arrive. And then he said to me, no, 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 no. It's a maze. He said, you start here. You can walk here. You catch yourself, you're over here. You catch yourself, you're here. Then you catch yourself, you're back here. And when you're back here, you want to cast away your confidence because it seems like every time you take two steps forward, you take a next two backwards. But he says it's a maze effect. And then the enemy comes in in that maze effect and begin to work on you if God really did answer your prayer, if God really did love you, he wouldn't have you going back and forth. You're going to move from here to here and get what you want. But we ne I never saw it like that. So I was like, Lord, I never knew that's how it was. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you watch some of your members, you're praying for them and they wonder well, why they can't get to the goal because every time they reach here, something happened to divert them here. And then when they reach here, sometimes you're here for a long while. And then you reach as close, you could smell it, you could touch it, and then something happened, you're back to square one. Am I, am I ministering to you here? Yes. Are you receiving? Yes. It's called the maze effect. Thank you very much. Amen. If we have people in the building, I'll tell them, clap for you. <laughs> Amen. It's called the maze effect. It is, it is a part of the trust process. And hence he said, cast not away therefore your confidence because when you're going through a maze effect one of the things you always think about eventually is throwing in the towel if you watch um boxing matches and two guys are boxing there's always a guy with a towel on his shoulder waiting to throw in the towel that means you give up and many times when we are in the maze effect we don't realize that we are in an effect, we are in an environment where our trust is being challenged. And if you don't understand that, you will give up on God. Now write this down. Trust has to be sustained by courage. Write that down. Trust has to be sustained by courage. Okay? It's like this. The Lord said this to me some years ago. Faith is an act of the will sustained by courage. So trust has to be sustained by courage. Why? Because faith is an act of your will and you sustain that action with your courage. Illustration. God, yes, you see this year? 2021, pandemic or not, I am going to be a faithful tither. You started well. At March, you need supernatural courage to maintain. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You need not just courage, you know, supernatural courage to maintain your staff. Yeah, why? Because it, courage has, is what you sustain your faith walk with. Amen. Faith walk is not sustained by desire. Faith walk is sustained by courage. So trust has to be sustained to, to courage. Why? Because faith is an act. And faith is, as an act, faith is an act of the will, and we have to sustain it with courage. Now, let's talk more about the maze effect. Because the maze experience can affect your trust. Type that in. Write that in, in, in the chat. Say, my maze experience can affect my trust. So let's look at five things um, that can happen in the maze effect. That, what do you mean by the maze effect? In case you come on late. You believe you receive. So you make your connection. You now begin to trust so you could experience the you shall have. But instead of walking the straight line, you find yourself two steps forward, three steps backward. You find yourself quite here, then you come back to the starting line. And when you are in an environment like that, things begin to affect you. And your trust begin to wane. And what God wants you to do is understand you don't have a belief problem here. You have a trust problem. What, is, what the enemy is attacking is your trust. If he could stop you from trusting, then he will slow you up or even stop you completely. So let's look at some things that could cause me to, that can affect me when I'm in this maze where I'm trusting. Number one, too much pressure. Oh yeah, too much pressure. <laughs> Ephesians 6 and verse 16. Yeah, I wasn't expecting so much pressure. God, I, I'm willing to, to go through this, but really and truly, I thought by now, we're going to hit the 15th wrong and I'm going to win. Right now we're on wrong 17 and it don't look good to me, for me. <laughs> I am ready to give up the trust. Oh yeah, 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 too much pressure. Ephesians 6 and verse 16, it says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, Wherewith you shall be able to quench all the what? Fiery darts. Not darts, but fiery darts. Why fiery? Pressure. Pressure. We have a saying. Pressure does bust pipe. <laughs> pressure, 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 pressure. Uh, amen. You may be looking at from a different country and you're wondering what we mean by that. Well, we have an institution that is called WASA. WASA, not WASA. WASA. And they are the authorities for water, and sometimes the pressure of that water, if your pipeline is not good enough, it will burst the pipeline. So we are saying, so I'm saying, when you are in this maze experience, and you're going right, and you're going left, and you're going this way, and you're going that way, eventually the pressure of that can make you want to quit. So you have to understand that there is a something called, guess what? Fiery that. Number two, and pay attention to this one. A lack of development of your human spirit. A lack of development of your human spirit. You see, you're in a maze. And in order to come through that maze, you have to have your human spirit developed. Because God needs to speak to you. And if according to Hebrews 5, you are one of those Christians whereby you are dull of hearing then God will have a problem in getting information onto you. So while you're going through the maze effect, he can't tell you, don't turn right. He can't tell you, don't turn left. He can't tell you, stay here for the next 10 minutes. Do not move. Why? Because your human spirit is not developed. Put up Job 32 and verse 8. Powerful verse of scripture. Job 32 and verse 8. Because God wants to help you. He understands what you're going through with the trust. With the impact of the trust. Watch this. Job 32 verse 8. It says. There is a spirit in man. Watch this. And the inspiration of the almighty. Give it them understanding. Now it didn't say the aspiration of the almighty. Yeah? It says the inspiration of the almighty. If you're a student of the Bible. And whenever the Bible uses the word inspiration. It's always associated with God speaking. The Bible says in Mark, Mark, Matthew 4 and verse 4, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that does what? Proceeds out of the mouth of God. So which means that I have to develop my human spirit when I am trusting God so that I am keen to the voice of Almighty God. 
Amen. I don't have this in my notes, but this is something I learned about God. He gives you information on a need-to-know basis. Gives you what? Information on a need-to-know basis. This is something I learned from him also. I think I mentioned this last year in, in conference, but come back up so maybe somebody need it. He is not obligated to repeat himself. <laughs> He's not what? Obligated to repeat himself. So you have to develop your human spirit because he gives inspiration. You need to hear from him. I remember when I was believing God for, our, for, for my home for, and the Lord began to use HDC. And once you're using HDC, it's not a perfect organization so you could have some problems. So I began to encounter some problems, and at that time, and most of you all know Joanne passed, so Joanne was alive, and I began, I told Joanne, I had enough of HDC. I went into the private sector and purchased a home. So we began to look in the private sector, uh, even though we were allocated and all of that, and while doing that, I began to, I had this, I got up a Saturday morning, she's in the kitchen, I'm in the bedroom, and I'm praying in tongues and so forth, and the Spirit of God spoke to me, and he said, all what you're doing, don't come out the system. I said, what system? HDC system. Give them what they want. Keep, I know, he said, yeah, it, stay with them. I said, do what? He said, stay with them. What, what was happening? Job 32, verse 8. There is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty give it understanding. Why was he talking to me like that? Because I was in a maze experience. And when you are in a maze experience and you're trusting God, you need to hear from heaven. You need to hear the voice of God. <laughs> Amen. And while he was telling me that, I left the bedroom and I went out to my wife. I said, you know, um, the Lord just spoke to me. She said, yeah, he spoke to me also. I said, okay, so you need to stay put. Amen. Now, if I didn't get that inspiration from him, I would have made mistakes. So when you're in the maze effect, effect and or maze experience and you're trusting God, develop your human spirit so that you're not dull of hearing so that you can hear from God. Hebrews chapter 10, Hebrews chapter 5, look at verse 10 and 11. Here's what it says. It says, talking about Melchizedek, it said, called of God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek, of whom, watch this, of whom, we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. So as a believer, I could be dull of hearing. As a believer, I could be what? Dull of hearing. And the key to walking with God when you're having a maze experience is to make sure you are not dull of hearing. Number three, third thing I need to pay attention to is this concentration on sense evidence. Now, this is basic things, but you will be surprised. These basic things are, do affect you when you are in a maze experience. Amen. Because you, you move from the right to the left, from the front to the back, from the back to the front, and you still can't reach where you're going, you begin to look at the external and judge where you are with God based on what is taking place. And then when you sit down to chat with some so-called mature believer, the reason why you're going through all of this sin in your life, <laughs> but if you get rid of this sin in your life, <laughs> then things will work. Well, I think Daniel didn't know that because when you read Daniel chapter 9, Daniel was trying to understand the vision, and in trying to understand the vision, he prayed about it, and the Bible says that instantly an angel came and opened his understanding and gave him revelation. But this is in chapter 9. When you reach chapter 10, Daniel is praying about a next vision, about some, a next revelation that he's having, but this time he's praying for 21 days. When the angel came, this time the angel said, from the day you prayed, God released me, but I was withheld in the heavenlies. So, well, so in chapter 9, his prayer was answered instantly. In chapter 10, it was not. So you have to understand that answer to prayer doesn't mean that one will always be a smooth sailing. You will have a maze effect. You have to hold your course because what you don't see, or put it this way, what you don't know about is what's working against you. So you have to know how to hold your course. So you have to be careful you don't concentrate on sense evidence. Now, if you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, 
2 Corinthians 5 and verse 7, the Bible simply says, we walk by faith, not by sight. And what that means is this. If I am walking by faith, I am not walking by sight. If I'm walking by sight, I am not walking by faith. So to walk by faith, I must not walk by sight. And if I'm walking by sight, it means I'm not walking by faith. What does that mean? That means that while I am going through the maze experience, what I see, what I feel, what I hear must not be controlling me. What must be controlling me is what I believe. Hallelujah. I hope you get that. Let me ask you, what's controlling you? Is it what you believe or what you see? Amen, 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 amen. Number, what number are we on? One, two, three. Number four. Pay attention to this one. Number four. A lack of revelation on God's faithfulness. A lack of revelation on God's faithfulness. When you are in this maze experience, one of the things you will question is God's faithfulness to you. If he loved me, I wouldn't be going through this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you question God's faithfulness. Yeah. yeah. The reason why I'm in this is because God is failing me. You question his faithfulness. Now, go with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11. I don't know if you all have it in the New Living Translation. If you do, you can put it up in the New Living Translation for me. It is one of the verses that reveals the faithfulness of God. Ecclesiastes 9, verse 11. It says, yes, now, Solomon is talking about things under the sun. He's not talking about things in heaven. This is not spiritual. Solomon is looking at life under the sun. So he's looking at how mankind live with one another and the things he observes about mankind while they live on earth. So keep that in mind. Let's read. It says, Solomon said, I returned and saw under the, oh, I'm reading it. That's not, let, let me read from the screen. He says, I observed something else under the sun. The fastest runner does not always win the race. Mm -hmm. The strongest warrior does not always win the battle. <laughs> The wise sometimes go hungry, and the skillful are not necessarily wealthy. Now, if you're a wise person, you will begin to pay attention to what Solomon is saying and look around and realize, what he's saying is true, you know. He continues, he says, and those who are educated do not always lead successful lives. That's why I, in church, I always tell my, my members, don't sacrifice the purpose of God on the altar of education. Okay? He said, and those who are educated do not always lead successful lives. It is all decided by chance, by being in the right place at the right time. Now, put it for me in the King James Version. I wanted to give you, because the old English just be a little something, but let's read it in the King James. He said in the King James, I return and saw that the race is not to the swift. That means those who come first is not necessarily... Uh, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet the bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill. But watch this. He said, but time and chance does what? Happen it to them all. Now, if you don't have a revelation that God will work through time and chance on your behalf, even though you're in this maze experience, you will come to him unfaithful. See, the Bible teaches in 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13, There has no temptation that has taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tested or tried above your ability to handle, but will also, with the temptation, test or trial, provide a way of escape. That verse didn't say the way of escape. That verse says, a way of escape. Why is it a way? Because it's possible that I could miss it. See, I could miss the way of escape. Why? I get frustrated in the maze experience. And because of that, I miss my opportunity to get my prayer answer. But thank God, time and chance. <laughs> God has the ability to create time. He has the ability to give you a second chance. Amen. And the Bible says it happened to them all. So I need a revelation on God's faithfulness that it doesn't matter that even if I am slow and I miss the race, 
God could turn things around to create another race and put me in it and give me time and chance to see my needs met to his ability. Yeah. Amen. So the, all of that happened in the maze effect. Because sometimes you tell yourself this was the time to get the prayer answer, but you were in the wrong place at the wrong time. God has a way of turning things around. Amen. So yeah, don't judge God on faithful because of a lack of revelation about his faithfulness. The last one, number, what's what? This number what? Five or six. Our confession can affect our trust. Our what? Confession can do what? Affect our trust. Yeah. Psalm 19 and verse 14. Psalm 19 and verse 14. Um, here King David, he says, he said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Now watch what he said. He said, let the words of my mouth and the what? Meditation of my heart be acceptable. So two things in my life I need to make sure they're acceptable. One, the words that I speak. Two, the condition of my heart. We're focusing on the words that you speak. He said, let the words of your mouth be acceptable. Why? Because when you're going through a maze experience, you could begin to speak words that are contrary to what you believe in. Knock, knock. Anybody home? Let me say that again. While you are going through the maze experience, you can begin to speak words that are contrary to what you believe. And once you begin to speak words that are contrary to what you believe, then the Bible teaches you can have what you say. So what happens is that instead of your words helping the Lord work for you, your words is now hindering you in your relationship with the Lord. Look at it again. Let the words of my mouth be acceptable in thy sight. Let the words of my mouth be acceptable in my sight. I have to understand that my life is a reflection of my speech. Your life is a, respect, a reflection of your speech. Look at, look, at it. look at Mark chapter 11 and verse 23. We're coming to a close. I hope you're getting something out of this. Mark chapter 11. Look at verse 23. He says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. He shall have what? whatsoever he said. So when I'm going through this maze experience, I had to be cautious as to what I allow to come out my mouth because what comes out my mouth will work against me or work for me. Amen. 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 <laughs> ah, oh, I trust God for that home. I spent 13 years and I work on my mouth for 13 years. I remember once, one, one time my children said, you're all always talking so positive about this thing. Just give up. <laughs> and I said, to, I remember telling my son, thank God it's not your fate. And it's my own. It's my right to trust. It's my right to believe. It's not your faith. It's my own. So I will walk by faith and I will control what I say as I stand in faith and I believe God. But I need you to understand, you have to pay attention to the words of your mouth. The words of your mouth will impact you while you are in this going through this maze experience. If you find yourself here and you say, God, you stop working for me. What do you think God, God is going to hear? You stop working for me. And if God is only here and you stop working for me, then how is he going to help you? Yes. Don't think that God can do, yes, he can. He can do things independent of our faith, but he didn't set up the system to function like that. God's method of operation is by your faith you shall be whole. God did not design the system that you could receive from him without believing and without trusting. He designed the system that you could believe, receive from him through your believing and through your trusting. Now, I, I, this, this is, this, as I said, I didn't go in too much into the believing side because I wanted to deal with the trust side and deal with the maze experience because that maze experience is real. Because some of you right now on the platform, you are looking, you are listening, you are taking notes, and I pray the Spirit of God begin to speak into your spirit and speak some direction into you as you are navigating through this maze effect. Because you need to know 
whether you should go right or whether you should go left. See, sometimes as faith people, one of the things we do is we exclude the ministry of the Holy Spirit and our capacity to trust. Because it sounds good to say, my faith got it. Yes. Knock, knock. Anybody home? Yes. Yeah, but sometimes you need to stop and say, Spirit of God, yeah. Um, I'm trusting you. Um, right now, I, I'm not feeling as though or like things are working the way it should. I feel as though I'm missing you in what I need to hear from you. Should I go right? Should I go left? Should I stand? Should I, what should I do? Now, this is the second time this came up. So let me say it to show you how important the inspiration of the Almighty is when you're in a, going through a trusting and you're experiencing a maze effect. Yeah. I had a, a there was a, a, a woman who was a minister at the Belmont Pentecostal Assembly. And she shared this testimony, and I'm closing with this to show you. Yeah, because this is one of the main areas. My, my faith walk with God, I love to hear him talk to me and say, don't do it this way. While you're trusting, no, you need to stay put. Hold, hold your hand here. No, 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 you're moving too slow. <laughs> Amen. And... She was at True Value. Now, this is a testimony, not a testimony. I just don't want to call her name over the air. Um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> not a testimony. There's a testimony. Yeah. So she's at True Value, and she is making grocery in Long Circular Mall in True Value. And she, she turned, came out of one lane and was turning to go into a next lane. Remember, put up for me um, Job 32, verse 8. Um, that's the verse that I just felt led to come back here. But there is a spirit in man and the, spirit, the inspiration of the Almighty give it understanding. Because you're, you're in a maze experience and you need to hear from the Spirit of God while you're trusting how, what direction to take. So she, she's walking. So she came out of one lane. And as she turned to go down this lane, she heard in her spirit, not this one, turn and go to the other one. She didn't question. She didn't do like the average Christian. I wonder if that's God, boy. Something deep down inside me telling me to go uh, wrong. <laughs> but she knew the voice of the Spirit of God, so she turned. And she began to walk on the other side. While walking on the other side, a gunshot came up the same aisle. Unknown to her, a robbery was taking place in the grocery. And the security guard was navigating himself away from the robbers and shots went off. He was shot. The same lane she was going to walk in. Now here's the interesting thing about the story. My neighbor is a security guard. I was told he got shot. When I inquire... He was the person that got shot. Wow. It was no testimony. What, what happened? There's a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty give it them understanding. Yeah. Many of you are listening to me. You are experiencing a maze effect. And you're under pressure. You're looking at, you're concentrating on sense knowledge. Your speech is not acceptable in the sight of the Lord. You're trusting God unfaithful because you don't understand that his faithfulness always creates time and chance, even when you mess up. There is a way, not the way of escape, a way. So God is not limited to your limits. He's unlimited. So your maximum is God's minimum. But he wants to speak to you. And I want to pray along that line. That as you are going through this maze experience, that the Spirit of God would give you inspiration. That inspiration will give you understanding and help you navigate through what you're going through. So agree with me in prayer on the platform tonight. And let's believe God that he will speak to you and bring revelation. Yes. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you're here with us. You have always been here with us. You know exactly what we are going through. You know what each person is going through. And Father, in Jesus' name, I ask that by your spirit, you will begin to bring inspiration to people. Begin to speak to people who are on this platform, who need direction. They are, some of them have not connected with you through belief, but some have, and they are trusting. 
But those that are trusting, they need direction. They need to hear from you. In the name of Jesus, may you begin by your spirit to give inspiration, to give inspiration, to give inspiration, to give inspiration. In the name of Jesus, Nakopa zubodishete yeke ogoboko sikitaka iba adase enomo asatele akasala olama nektala soko tolo seke talaba saka nongolo kete kalama soko tolo she Lord in the name of Jesus give inspiration by your spirit Give inspiration by your spirit. Give inspiration by your spirit. Give inspiration by your spirit. We thank you for revelation. We thank you for revelation. We thank you for revelation. In Jesus' name, amen. I trust you receive from the word of God. Amen, amen, amen. I trust you receive. Learn to believe it's your connector. Learn to trust. That's how you're going to experience. I love you. God bless.